Facebook and then we can um, jump in. For sure. Um, so we're letting people into the room right now. Boop, boop, boop. Hopefully people should be joining. Thursday, Thursday. We need to convert this to a to that or a wind down <laughs> Thursday. Yeah. I know. I'm think like I really think we should go down on once a week. Um, because even for me, like I'm like I don't know if I could do this twice a week thing. <laughs> I guess it's, it's almost a little too much, right? Because we do something on Fridays too. So yeah. right. Very. Um, it uh, makes it makes the week um, long. I find that these conversations are really good. Like once, like, you know, I've been getting, like a lot of people have been inviting me into webinars and it's really good. Like people just want to chat and it's just a great way to keep our pro productivity high. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, it's just chilling and just not engaged. And it's really helping you engage with your client and engage with the world. You know what I mean? In any way you can. Keep your productivity high, connectivity. Yeah. Um, Somebody, I saw, I saw a quote and it was like, don't be busy, be productive. You know what I mean? Like, stop saying, oh, I'm just busy. I'm busy. Like, you are you actually productive or are you just running around with like a chicken, you know? Right. Yeah. In the quarantine, I have to have a checklist so that I'm making sure that I'm productive and I have a business checklist and then I have my personal checklist. It's like my, I call it my momager list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that. I have, um, I bought like magnets for my refrigerator. So it's a full calendar. Then I have daily to do and then I have one on the side. It's like I can write my groceries on. Yeah. So each week that, looks different but that yes, helps me stay yeah. Yeah. all right i think i'm trying to do too much i'll be forgetting that facebook asked for a lot of information <laughs> i'll go in and edit this later <laughs> Join us now. um do we got some people coming in oh hey we do Hi guys. Hello. Hello. It's all there. Give us a, a little shout out. Who's there and where are you from? It better say me side. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. The Facebook wanna act weird. Uh oh. I'm going to try it one more time. And if it doesn't work, then we'll just keep it moving. Yeah, or you could, you know, you could send it over to me to get me access and I can try to broadcast it. Okay. Sometimes this wants to work and sometimes it doesn't. I'm going to um, add this to my stories now. I'm going to do the swipe up so they can just swipe up and join. I still need to figure out how to do that. It's like, mine takes, like, I feel like I have the last Instagram that just was able to get music. Like, I just got music. <laughs> you know what? It was funny. My music went away. I had music. I was at the shop one day, and I was like, I want music so bad. Da, 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 da. And then yeah. it just popped up on my Instagram. And then now it's gone. I can't do any I music. To. But to get the swipe up, you have to have 10,000 followers. Okay, okay. So that's why the swipe up might not work. But now I ain't got no music. So I'm like, what what I do? What did <laughs> I do? Like, <laughs> you're like, which one? Which one? Which one? <laughs> I can only get one or the other. Like they I don't know. They don't they don't, they don't block my page plenty of times because I've been playing music and I don't put I don't own the rights and they shut my little stuff down. So that's mm -hmm. probably my I'm a pro problem causer, I guess. <laughs> little Christmas daughter. <laughs> right. All right, we are live on Facebook. If you go to the Party Grawl Ball page, if you are not logged into this via Zoom, we are also streaming on Facebook via the Party Grawl page. So feel free to check us out there. Hello to our Facebook friends. I really sound like a radio person. Um, and, so, <laughs> and so uh, we're back. I don't know what number this is. Uh, what is this, Out the Mud 15? I don't know. I feel like we've done a ton of these. Um, but today we're talking about one of my favorite things, which is the beauty industry. Um, because unbeknownst to a lot of people, I am a product junkie and a facial junkie. And I just like spa and hair and nails and girly things. And I always have since I was a kid. 
Um, and so this is one of my favorite things to talk about. Um, but it's also been one of the industries that's been affected the most by what we're kind of going through right now, which is COVID-19, the coronavirus. Um, for those that are new, um, the way this uh, little thing is set up, is that what we usually do is we bring in entrepreneurs that are working in different industries and we talk through um, our version of a SWOT analysis. We call it a chat analysis. And so we talk through conditions, hurdles, actions, and takeaways, um, essentially in a way to try to give people real deal information, steps, actionable items that they can do if they're in this industry or if they're trying to figure out how to be nimble, how to pivot and how to switch up and change um, what they're trying to do. Um, and so myself, Kelly Jones, um, co-founder of Be Nimble and Black Hatch Fund, and my cousin and business partner, Jeff Williams, um, come together and just kind of shoot the shit. Um, this is the first time that we, we do cuss on here if you've never been here before. Um, we do drink on here if you've never been here before. Um, Cheers. I mean, we're the guys that created Party Gras. I, I mean, I don't know what you expect from us. Um, <laughs> like we, we, can, we can do both. Um, we can talk business and we can drink too. And so um, today I'm, I'm just super excited about this conversation, but I want to allow Jeff to say a few words before we introduce our panelists for today. No, I'm, I'm very thankful for this panel. And um, as far as like the beauty space, I'm not fully, you know, I'm not always using like the products and stuff, but my passion really started with respect to like data and getting behind consumer behavior and like black buying power and our spin through the Nielsen research and the Nielsen research and those reports were really centered on specifically how we are driving the beauty industry. So not only as consumers, uh, but our insights, like all that stuff. And I was really started getting in a podcast and they started hearing things about the fact that our culture really is the leading force behind uh, that industry. But secondly, from an entrepreneurship perspective, we do, we under index with respect to ownership within the space. And what happens is when our community gets behind our community brands, typically we build it up and then we inevitably get eaten up by some large corporation who gives a crap about our culture. So it was that whole balance and that mixture that I'm just fascinated by. And when I think of everyone who's on this call today, specifically in Indianapolis and what the beauty industry means, I feel like we started it. If you think about Madam C.J. Walker, like this is the helm. This is the place where we should be having that conversation because it's rooted in this idea that the first black female entrepreneur, really for black culture in general, was... Madam C.J. Walker out of Indianapolis, and what was her product? It was beauty products. So let's talk about today. Let's talk about us. Let's talk about where we are and hear from folks within our city right now that's driving it, driving that culture, you know, in this space of innovation. What are y'all doing? What's up with y'all? And, and how can you support those that are either currently at your level or maybe even behind that's trying to get to where you are uh, to to overcome these initial hurdles, but also from an industry wide perspective, grow out after COVID. Absolutely, and I think it's a direct reflection of what we talk about all the time, Jeff. Right, like the difference between being a creator versus a consumer. Um, I mean, to your point, you know, Black people have one point two trillion dollar buying power. Um, beauty is a five hundred and thirty two billion dollar industry, um, and Black women, just Black women alone, and I. I I put the post up about this today. We spend $7.5 billion on beauty products, like 80% more and twice as much on skincare than any other race, right? And so, you know, every time I see a brand like Head and Shoulders decide they want to do a black line, I'm like, but, but like, why? Like, for what? You know, but like, the thing is, is, you know, they're a big box brand and people see the name and they see that they're doing something, you know, it's always a brown container. Um, it always got a little curl on the front, you know, like very um, clearly, you know, uh, just doing what they got to do because they understand the buying power, right? Getting um, what's happened to that money. 
Absolutely. That's you know, but, but on the other side of it, as people that consume this stuff all the time, we know this market and know what we need more than anybody else. And I also, it's important to say that that doesn't even include the services we get done. Right? This doesn't include like going to the esthetician. It doesn't include going to get your hair done, right? Like this is solely based on product. So I imagine we spend a lot more money than we really do. Uh, or what's really kind of out there. Um, but what's crazy is, you know, back to, to what Jeff is saying, like now we're in this time where literally the world is shut down, right? Like you can still buy products, but you can't necessarily get those services done. Um, and so with that in mind, like I want to kind of lead to you guys to one, introduce yourselves. I'm super excited to have you. You guys are some super hustlers. Um, just introduce yourself, you know, who what it is you do, um, your shop you rep, you, uh, rep or whatever. Um, and then we'll jump right in to like, just what's going on and chop it up and drink wine. <laughs> Let's start with um, Stephanie, since you're to my immediate left. Okay, I was gonna say, um, should I go? <laughs> um, I'm Stephanie Williams. I am the owner of Poshka Fear Studios located in Broad Ripple and also the owner of the Chair Hop. Um, Posh Kapir Studios Salon, um, I have, is a studio style salon. As you know, we are all shut down. Um, the Chair Hop is a avenue that I have started for salon owners and stylists to get the feel of salons. This is going to be really great after COVID-19 to not service your clients out of your home. So this will give you the opportunity, the Chair Hop gives you the opportunity to go work in a salon without the lease agreement and keeping the salon full for our salon owners. Taylor. Me, I'm next, okay. Hello everyone, I'm Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> I am the owner of Skin I'm In, Skin Essentials and Beauty Bar. Um, service wise, I'm an esthetician and um, I offer facial services and waxing services. Um, primarily with the facial services, they are all holistic approach. I use all natural products and techniques because I believe that our skin, melanin, heals just perfectly with just very simple natural products. Got to go get back to our roots. And then I also handcraft my own natural products and sell them on my site as well. Um, I used to suffer from really bad cystic acne and I've had my fair shares in the dermatologist. I've tried Accutane, Proactive, all the topical creams you can think of and all of that made it worse. And it wasn't until I studied melanin and our anatomy and what we need and I was able to clear my own skin. And I know that other women needed this too. And I know that my confidence grew as well when I was able to establish healthy skin. And I know that other women suffer from that. And it's like, up until five years ago, they didn't really market products to um, black skin. You see all these like black owned skincare brands popping up, which is awesome. Um, but we just used to go in the store and kind of read the front of the label and kind of get like what's available to us, which never really worked. So that's what I, I'm here for. <laughs> awesome. And Abriana. Hello everyone, my name is Abriana Williams. It's still in the school today, but um, I am stylist and owner of Hello Beautiful Hair, the salon. And I specialize in healthy hair. Um, I specialize in extensions. I just love everything beauty. Obviously it's in my name, beautiful. And I want that to be inner and outer beauty. I feel like if you look good, you feel good. And that's why I'm in this industry. And as well as like when you feel good, it just pours out. You know what I mean? So my whole mission as a stylist, as an owner, is to pour out what's inside of me to everyone else to hopefully lift your vibe, lift your, you know, your confidence, lift how you feel about yourself within making your outer look, you know, beautiful, but even in this whole process of getting your hair done or whatever service you receive from us at the salon, making you feel beautiful as well. I'm going to go ahead and give a couple of shout outs real quick because this skin is because of Taylor <laughs> and this wash is because of Abriana. So in case you, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if, you were, if you were wondering if they actually do a good job, I can attest to it. Um, small story. Like, so I generally have pretty like decent skin, like it does well. Um, but I would say starting about this time last year, um, I started just having weird issues. Like I would get these weird breakouts. I would get 
all sorts of stuff, like weird dry patches, sensitivity that I've never had before. Um, Super. And, I, and I'm <laughs> like, just like real sensitive. And so I was just like, this is not like, I don't know what's going on. Um, and I mean, what I think I learned, especially, you know, with Taylor, and just because I'm also a skincare junkie is there were a lot of things. Like, I think most of it was stress. Um, related um, because I tend to be super stressed out all the time. Um, I think a lot of it was probably some diet things. And and I think the biggest thing that I've noticed since like I've had zero, you know, issues, which started probably in about November, December um, is simplicity. Um, I went from like being a 10 step skincare routine girl, which I still love. And every once in a while I will pull out, you know, a, a product to just like, the, the most basic of like skincare right now. Um, and maybe we can talk about it later if anybody cares, but um, I don't think I would clear up the way I have without um, having Taylor. I was going to her every two weeks <laughs> at a certain point. So, um, so just like testament to like, you guys are bomb. And then Stephanie also did my hair before. Like I've literally, I've been to all of you guys. Like now I can say, I can attest on this Zoom chat right now that all three of y'all are, freaking talented so we're not talking about people that don't got it going on we ain't talking about people that don't got good ideas we're not talking about people that are fake hustlers we were talking about people that are really out here getting it um and so and so what i I love you guys you know i do and so um what i want to talk about first is you know and you guys can all feel free to answer this or if just a couple of you want to answer it that's fine i really want to better understand like the real impact that you guys have seen in having to do this whole shutdown. Um, You know, obviously you can't touch clients anymore, but I think that has to go a lot deeper. Right. And so I'm just curious to know, like, what has been your experience? Like, what have have you been feeling? How are you feeling during this time? Definitely a lot deeper than touching clients for a salon owner's perspective, because those bills are still due essentially, but how can I cha- how can I charge my girls in my salon booth rent and they can't work? So, but but who is that on? So it's right. definitely a lot deeper for us. So it impacts us on a whole nother level. Yes, they're saying, oh, you don't have to pay rent right now, but right now is right now. And that's still we still have it on the back end. Rent is still going to be due, as well as citizens gas and for our hot water for our salon and our IPL and our internet and whatever else. Essentially, when they do open back up, we need to go back to business because we need to get back to money. So they're going to need all that working. And although mm-hmm. they're saying, oh, we're not going to disconnect you, it's still going to be due. And who is that going to be on? Because they still need to get back up to making their money. So it affects us way deeper than to not just touching clients. Um, that from that standpoint financially especially since we haven't got any unemployment they just told us we could file on friday oh we gonna talk about it girl because you i'd be listening i I died on a hill on this one i was like child they are making it hard to get your little unemployment you know what i'm saying (laughs) oh yeah i'm still waiting on mine (laughs) right but like even the 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 process of filing it was so you really couldn't answer the questions because it's like I work for and, myself. And I was I denied. Do. I was denied. And they're just saying, listen, wait, because we got to retro it. We got to fix it. You'll be accepted. But it's still denied. I haven't heard anything. Mm. Yeah. And then if you can't get through, you got to, like, I, one day I stayed on hold for like an hour. It's like, okay. I was Did on you guys do the PUA loan? I mean, the PUA one? The. Uh, what's that? Um, I can't remember the exact acronym of it. It's an acronym of something, but it's- I know what you're talking about. I guess I did apply for it, so I haven't heard anything, which I think is hilarious that that loan particularly has given other small businesses, quote unquote, that's what they, the the fuss is about, about Ruth Chris, how they got all this- Oh, the PPP loan. The PPP loan. I'm eligible for that. I'm also, what I've done. I went, I got capital from like pay, my PayPal capital and my Square capital. Yeah. Because you don't have like, a, you don't really have an interest rate and you pay it back like when you want to type thing. So. For the most part, yes. So I've used, like I've done the Square capital and then there's other, like Shea Moisture did a beauty industry giveaway. Um, I just got one today that was like PBA loan. Um, that's for the beauty industry only. So there are some that's for the beauty industry, but they're not much. And they're by donation only. All of them say this is based on donation. So it is based on 
everyone else loving us enough to say here, right. and then they distribute it up to all of us. So right. the, government is, way. the government isn't saying, hey, self-employed people, here you go. And yeah. I've been self-employed for over 10 years. So listen, you can't I don't know, know, I don't know what, yeah. we're, 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 what are we doing? I just told them I've had a job since I was 14 years old. Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't even know what this is, it, what this is about. Yeah. The PUA is the Pandemic Unemployed ass Assistance. So like when you first applied, you apply like a regular, you know, person, like a regular working um, person, and then they're going to deny you for that. But then you go back in and apply for the PUA. And it literally says, like, it gives you an example. And it says, I'm a hairstylist and I can't work due to COVID. So mm -hmm. that okay. one is what I think that we all will be accepted for. We're definitely going to be denied for the first one because we can't, because nobody's paying us. But yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we can't, you know, Apply, like say can you pay us when we don't have anybody to record to but that right. PUA I think that that said they're not going to start paying that out to the fourth so nobody has received that it right. won't be paid out to the starting the fourth so if everybody applied for that hopefully you know that kicks in but and then so is that a loan or is that because or is no that, that is going to be six hundred dollars um a yeah, week okay. yeah. six hundred dollars a week and then plus there's there's other things that go into it. It could be more, it could be less, but mm -hmm. at least they're going to give you a first payout of at least $600 or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and the PP I imagine PP back pay though too, right? Yeah, like, back pay. Back date to when it first started. Yeah. Question, um, you guys kind of jumped into it early, but did, I want to talk a little bit more about PPP and you got and like in these EIDA, like these loans, right? Um, and what your your experience has been with them. I don't, have you guys tried to apply? Have you? So for me to, with the PPP, um, it doesn't really, they don't really apply to me because I have, I don't have a commission-based salon. I don't employ anyone at my salon. They pay me to work there. So, you know, boot for no salon. So I can't say, they, the PPP is paying out per employee. So they were giving $1,000 per employee. So, you know, on my business license, it's me, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I don't have any employees. Like they can, they can technically give me a thousand dollars, but I mean, that's it. Like, I'm not going to get, you know, like they were saying like $10,000. I'm not going to get $10,000 yeah. because I don't have 10, 000, 10 employees. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, it really yeah, sucks for people so I think what you're talking about, I think what you're talking about is the EIDL. That's like the grant thing that they were doing, right? Yeah. Like okay. Yeah, you're right. The economic injury disaster loan and but then you have the ppp which is the paycheck protection program which i think you're also you're you're, dis, you're describing because it it specifically relates to people that have employees so basically you okay. take whatever payroll that you're processing and things like that um and then they you they add that up do some kind of point times 0.25 plus you know some numbers and then they come up with a number for a forgivable loan. Yeah. Um, and, and I think through the, I love talking about this. I think through the first, the first part of the loan process, um, I mean, it was obvious that like, it was just a fumble, like a, a major fumble, right? Like we saw a lot of publicly traded companies get money and be forced to give it back. We saw a lot of people just, who, uh, applications weren't processed, right? And so now like they ran out of money, they've now re-jiggered it, right? They put some more money into it. And now it seems like there might be an opportunity for you guys. I mean, not a lot. I mean, not most, but I'm going to see if this, if this works out. So it still works the same in that you have to be, you have to have employees in order to, to get the money. Right. Um, but in the case of you guys, and I don't know how you guys are filed. If you guys are filed as like sole proprietors, LLC incorporated, I don't know which one you are, but depending on which one you are, um, you might be able to apply for yourself. Yeah. If you can show yeah. that you, I mean, you obviously wouldn't be able to apply based on the people that work in your shop, but you may be able to apply for yourself. Yeah. Um, but you'd have to be able to show like, you have to be a sole proprietor. That's the issue. Um, so if you have a corporation or you have an LLC, I mean, you can't do that because it's be, it's the, the PPP in that perspective is connected to you being a sole proprietor of a business without it necessarily having a business structure, right? Um, we can maybe talk about that offline, but that might be the only other route. But if you, I mean, if you have a, a corporation or LLC and you're still only you and maybe you're not drafting a, a salary yet, or maybe, you know, you are paying yourself, like there's still going to be a lot of people that are kind of left out to dry. So um, that part still bothers me a lot. And I will continue to uh, ride on that hill until that hill dies. 
Um, Jeff, you look like you got something to say. No, I just, um, I'm just curious about, uh, I mean, what we're talking about here is really that the beauty industry sits in a unique space mm -hmm. where it's very difficult based off of how our businesses are framed in this space to get some of these resources. Yep. So. It's, and that's the case, honestly, for a lot of businesses, like way more businesses than we probably care to really acknowledge. Um, right. And, and I don't think that that's at any fault of how people choose to organize their businesses or how they choose to um, conduct them more than it's um, a, 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 an actual like being not fully addressing the actual people that they need to address, right? Like, I don't even know how the LA Lakers can get past a loan officer for a small business loan. Like, I don't even understand like how that's even- Passing them through, they not even- You know what I mean? Like, I don't even understand yeah. how, how that could even happen. You know what I mean? So like, I feel like there's like just, like we know it's like put against us to not work, right? But I also think there's just a level of just like negligence from the top down, like from the oh, yes. rolled out to the way, you know, it went to the people to, you know, now they doubling back and trying to do something different and it still ain't working. Like they just, I, there's something to be said about that. They take it too long. To be said about that. Yeah. And that's the other thing. I mean, it's taking so long that most people are going to be out of business before they get the money anyway. Yeah. Or for our industry, they're not going to wait. We have families to take care of. So they're going to take precautions that they can take. But for a lot of people, they can't just sit on their hands when their hands is what makes them their money. And right. you keep running us around in circles and circles and circles. And we hear this one day and this another day and you can't get us any type of help. Yeah. And it's really so, sad because it makes people, I was just telling my husband this, like it makes you have this turmoil to go out there and put yourself in jeopardy. And it sucks because that's why I'm like, y'all just wait, like just wait and do, yeah. do do what you can do with the um you know unemployment thing a file so that if they then deny you, then maybe you can go to those precautions. But don't put yourself in jeopardy, don't put your life in jeopardy. Because I have been seeing a lot of stylists, you know, do hair at home and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, that is super dangerous because that person, you know, maybe went to Kroger today, maybe they went to Target, <laughs> maybe they went to this, and then you now they brought all like that to your home. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I know it's hard, but just don't do that because your life is more precious than that money. And I know it seems maybe the opposite right now because, you know, bills are due, but it's like, man, like, I don't want nobody to, you know, we're hearing deaths left and right, you know? Yeah. Or like, any yeah. death is, a, is an amount, you know what I'm saying? Any death. So it's like, right. I don't want to, you know, wake up tomorrow and hear, you know, oh, girl that used to do hair is dead because. Just like yeah. that, there was a barber. Somebody sent me a story. Mm -hmm. a barber that was doing house calls, and he he died. You know? Yeah, yeah. So. I remember that. There was, it was like a threat. Somebody did it in a thread. That was actually wrong. See, I be looking at the wrong stuff. I, but somebody yeah. did it in a thread that was kind of funny. Like I kind of laughed. It was like one. It was like, yeah, man, we over here. We still cutting hair or whatever. <laughs> period. And he was like two. He's like, man, I got a little tickle in my throat. And it was like three. Like R.I.P. Somebody. I was like, oh man. That's yeah. kind of funny. <laughs> before <laughs> even before COVID, I don't want anybody in my house. Before COVID, that's why the chair hop was invented. Because before COVID, I don't believe my my kids are there. I don't want you using my bathroom. They use my like. Listen, that's just how I am. I don't even before COVID. I don't want your roaches in my house. I don't want nothing that you may have at home. I just don't want hair all over my house. You know, I'm, I, don't I, hair I, was there. I was there in the beginning of my stages of before I had my license, I used to do hair at my house. Mm -hmm. And once, you know, me and my husband, I've been with him since I was a child, but he been through all, he, we are not having not one strand of hair. I don't even really have a comb here. Like I really have to go to the shop <laughs> to do my hair. Oh I don't my have goodness. nothing here. I had to cover my 14 year old today and I was like, oh my goodness, I don't have nothing. I don't got, what am I going to do, son? I, I, I don't have any, I don't keep anything at the house. The other two, you avoid people knowing where you live at one because I don't got time to fix your one curl because you didn't do it right. Or yeah. you didn't, I don't, I, listen, I'm we're not I'm doing this. Home base. I'm yeah. currently home based, but I, I feel like as, as professionals, we already take those precautions. Like, cause it's like, you should be worried that we weren't taking these precautions before COVID because Absolutely. we were taught like that was like a thing that 
like they stuck to a sanitation a sanitation like you're messing with people's skin mm-hmm. eyes hair i mean using all types of different products like so i i definitely want to i definitely take the precautions already but i also have to keep in mind that i do live with someone else i do have a man i do live with him he does have his children they come over every other weekend so i'm working to figure out because i was like I was excited. I was like, I'm going to open my books for May. It's my birthday. And then like you get today, it's like, oh, we're going to move it. I'm like, okay. So now I got to kind of rearrange some things. I was going to take a few clients here and there. Um, but more so, I'm just more focused now. I'm thankful that along, even though I provide services and I'm not able to do that necessarily right now, I have my backup as e-commerce to sell products yeah. and put the products out and that, and Let's stop the, right there though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're about to get to that. Yeah. We just got finished talking about some real depressing stuff right now, right? Like we talk about like dying, barber's diet, ain't no money. <laughs> no money. Right. Nobody's giving us no money. Like it's real right. sad. I feel like that can like really mess up the mood. Um, but everyone knows like, everybody out here not surviving right now like they barely making it by the the hair on a chinny chin chin um but i mean i think you guys brought up some really amazing things right like one like obviously it this expands way past just touching clients or clients coming into the the building right like we're talking about you know your bills people that are in your salons bill you know everyone is affected and all of that is like sitting on your shoulders right Mm -hmm. and then we kind of delved into like some of the, like, that's the condition we're under, right? And then we, we talked about the hurdles, which is, you know, ain't no access to no nothing. And so when there's no access to nothing or we can't figure out how to get the thing, we have to figure out what we are going to do in order to just maintain and to keep things going. And so, um, Taylor, I'll just come back to you since you were almost about to kind of go there, but I would love to just hear more about what you've been doing, um, what you've already had established, what maybe you've, you've started new um to like keep keep something going on keep going right yeah um, so <laughs> so i launched my product line last july in the summer and i was still like i would stay still more focused on the service-based side of my business so i didn't really put my all into like being like you know just putting my all into my products but now that we have nothing else to do um i just it's just giving me the opportunity to um, I'm just doing the things I want to do in my business. So like, for example, I'm all about, my motto is start with what you got. I'd rather start what I got than not start at all. So I, I still, to this day, right now, I don't have labels on my products because I have a certain vision of how that should look. And they're actually in the works now. I've gotten with the graphic designer. They're making them. It kind of put it on the back burner a little bit because of COVID. Um, but luckily, I, she actually reached out to me this week saying that she was going to get back to work and start doing it again. So that's really helpful. So no labels. I order, um, make sure I order my uh, containers, make sure I order all my ingredients. And I'm just like whipping it up in my kitchen. Um, and then I was just like, I don't care. I don't have labels, whatever. I'm just going to sell these products. I'm going to explain to you why you need these products, why they work. And then more so I got a website built after that. And then now I'm just like more focused on, okay, marketing, content, content, pushing out products, products. Because I'm used to posting all about facials and skin tips and why you should get a facial and make, I'm trying to change, like I'm trying to pivot my own lane in the beauty industry. I like that about the beauty industry. You can make your own lane. So a lot of people have the perception of facials are like a luxury service. You don't, there's not a lot of people that just be like, okay, I'm going to get a, I'm getting a facial every month. Like they get their nails and their hair done. Well, you you know, (laughs) but so I'm trying to change the the mindset, (laughs) the perception of like, when you get a facial from me, you need these facials because these facials are actually benefiting you and getting to getting your skin to where it needs to be and making you feel good and making you feel confident. So although I can't do that by touching you and physically giving you facials, I'm going to give you these products. And I will say I've had an overwhelming amount of support and I'm thankful for that. And I'm going, that just kind of motivates me to keep going. And there's areas where I needed, there's little things that I need to change that I like packaging like okay that packaging is a little too cheap because it's not really keeping the product in like how it should like my scrub bags so now i know okay i'm gonna change that i'm gonna get a container instead of a bag and just little things like that, that i'm just been working on no i think that's i think that's um uh, a, a common thing amongst entrepreneurs that we uh that we've talked through uh talk with specifically in service-based industries is they've been everybody's been shifting to the product-based revenue where you can leverage e-commerce and this non-contact strategy 
So it's unique to see to hear to hear you say that uh, because that's something that you put on the back burner, right? Yeah. Like you were so focused on the service, and in the back of your mind, you kept saying, "Well, you know, I really want to get this other down, other thing down." So my question for you, just while we're here, what was it that had you more focused on your experience versus your product? Because f facials are like my absolute passion. Yeah. Um, and I got so good at it. So, you know, normally when some, you get good at something and it's easy, you'd, you'd rather do the easy than work on the hard part of it. So, Ooh. I mean, I'm just being honest. <laughs> I, knew I, mean, I, I knew what question to ask. I knew what question to ask. Go bring that out. It's it's hurt. Hurt. I'm, I'm just being honest. Like, it, it's easy oh. for me to tell you everything about your skin, give you a regimen, give you a facial, and send you on your way and answer questions if you need it. But ooh, we're earning an e-commerce is hard. I have to deal with, I have to, I, not, it's just me. So it's me making the products, um, me making sure orders get crossed, me making sure things get shipped out, me responding and making sure I have exceptional customer service because that's one thing we we kind of are bad on with black owned businesses. We got to work better on our customer service. And that was always my number one goal. Um, having a turn a faster turnaround time. I'm trying to incorporate that and just making sure I respond to everybody. I don't want to be like one of those people that you're you're supporting me. You're giving me your money, so I want to make sure you are able to reach me and talk to me. Other companies are not like that, so I don't know. Just gonna keep oh, flowing. Okay. This this is what's working right now, and it's gonna continue <laughs> to work. I mean, I had a I had a goal. I had a goal, like I wanted to have a certain amount of orders six months from like January, but now it's like, it's happening now. And it's kind of like COVID is like, kind of like a blessing in disguise because it kind of forced me and pushed me out of my comfort zone and to do what I need to do. And that, and that's, that's really why I, I wanted to ask that question because I think when you think about the product thing, you said something extremely pivotal and that was, it wasn't where I needed it to be. It's not in my mind. That's not, what I was producing at this moment is not where I want it to be. And you were talking about, I'm waiting on this graphic designer. I'm waiting on this. I'm waiting on that to get it done. This season forced you to say, all that. Yeah. What can I do I right now? Right and I got some turn. cute little boxes and containers. <laughs> <laughs> Look. My products actually work, so it doesn't even matter about the label. So the great thing, the great thing about that too, is the people that may have bought your products, especially if they're local, they're more likely to probably book a service with you and still continue mm -hmm. to buy products. So you're yes. probably just going to have additional customers on top of that too, right. based mm -hmm. on the fact that someone new learned about a mask, right? Oh yeah, I get DMs mm -hmm. like, okay, I, I tried your mask. Now I want, now I want a facial. I need to book a facial. Of like, oh, yeah. and vice versa. <laughs> yep, and vice versa. The the the. The, what you uncovered also is this. You talked about the educational aspect. Like you love what you're doing, you're passionate about it. And when the ladies come in or even the men, when we get our facials, you're educating them on their skin. Like yes. so my question, really the follow-up is like, how is your social media presence? Like if you're an educator, education on social media, right? Like yes. that alone is building your brain. I was brain. gonna say that. I'll, That's I'll building your brain. <laughs> You, know you gotta I mean? do more, like, Taylor. Like I'm, yes. I'm tuned into your, you know, I'm tuned into yours because you know yes. we have a relationship. Yes. But like, that is one of the hugest things that I've learned over this because I'm infamous for saying I don't have time. You know what I'm saying? Right. I right. don't have enough time. But right. all you have right now is enough time. Is enough so, time. Like you Neither. know, you're, you're posting Depends. about your products. <laughs> you need to show how you use your products on your right. site. Mm -hmm. You might think, oh, I look a mess. Y'all see me. Well, yeah, I don't know if all y'all see me, but I see you every morning. I be see, I be seeing you. You catch me in a bonnet, okay? <laughs> a bonnet on. I'm doing a new verse. I'm showing you what I'm doing. I'm showing my different looks. I'm showing it on myself. You might think, you know, you have to get more confident in yourself. Like, you know, I know what I'm doing. I'm telling these people. Right. How to do it. Let me show them because and I'm not shy. I can get in front of the camera. It's just back to that saying, I don't have time, but I definitely have time to get y'all these tutorials out. You I have time to watch your face three times a day. Yes. Watch your face three times a day. Like, let, me yes. you so. let me show y'all how to, you know, de detox your face. Let me show y'all. You can break it down. All those posts, all those posts need to be videos. Like we could just right. see. You're right. Because people, people don't read. People don't really read. Right. They yep. watch. They listen. Yeah. Yeah. And before we move on, there was this critical thing I just wanted to touch on really quick. The phase that you're in with your product is in the tech world, they're calling that the MVP. It's the minimum viable product. So yeah, you ain't got the labels right. You ain't got all the shit the way. It ain't tight how you want it. 
Right. That motherfucker work. Yeah. It work. It work. It work right now. And the power of that is right now during this season, customers are going to be more compassionate too. Right. They are going to give you real feedback, but they're going to be more understanding. And to you, you're being compassionate as well. It's like, look, baby girl, you can't come in, but I'll put this in a package for you. Here's how you got to do your own facial. Hit me up if you have any questions. Oh, and by the way, let me know how you feel about the packaging. Let me know how you would like it moving forward. Then when you hop right. out of this COVID shit, what you got next? Yeah. You got yep. a true vision and pathway to get to the next level of what your product looks like. From packaging, right. design, to form, all of that. Yeah, that's, again, right. that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to find, I always try to find a silver lining. I'm like, yeah, I'm not working, but you know, maybe I need it. Like I said, I'm always talking about I ain't got time. I have so much more time to do like what she's saying, work on my customer service because I'm not always standing behind the chair or work on my products or work on this or, you know, show my product more and move it in different, you know, directions and reach different audiences. We just got time and thankful for social media. Cause like you said, you need to work that social media. It's free. Yeah, yeah. it's free. Speaking of social yep. media, Abriana, I'm going to take it to you. Cause you just talked about how you, you've been on the bonnet. You've been having a bonnet on. You know what I'm I mean? the realest hairstylist I'm right just for today, just for now. <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? Period. <laughs> I'm the realest <laughs> person you ever met. Because I could, like, real. you know, what it, what it streams from is like, you know, of course I have a confidence in myself and I'm thankful to have a husband that puts that confidence in me too that, you know, I'm not here for, I'm, I don't want you to like me because I'm pretty. I want you to like me for this right here. You know what I mean? Exactly. Or I want you to like me for what I'm doing, what my social media is here for. I want you to, I want to attract those type of clients. You know what I mean? It's basically like reaching a certain type of person. And yeah, my person is somebody that's genuine, somebody that cares about themselves, wants to see, everybody loves to see the climb. You know what I'm saying? So maybe, yeah, you see me right here, but you know, I can be up here and I'm going to get up there. You know what I'm saying? But it's, right. a, climb, it's a climb to everything. And I feel like you, what you say, they're like, I love seeing your climb. You know what I mean? People Thank might you. think, oh, you know, she's, what is she doing? Da, da, da. When they see, when you, and leave all that on your social media too, because when they see that bottom and they see that top, that's, they're going to follow you just because of that. Cause they're going to be feel inspired by you. You know what right. I mean? Right. Right. No, definitely. I'll get in my body in a heartbeat, but I know my grandmother, <laughs> she can't stand my body. I walked, I, came, I went over there earlier today to make sure she was good. She's like, I'm going to burn that bonnet. I'm going to burn it. I'm like, older people, they just always got to be made up. I'm just like, you know. It's not even older people. I get DMs every day. Some of my best friends and some of my like people that like I consider family take that bonnet up. You you can't stop me. You can't touch me. <laughs> you can't you can't come to my nope. house to take me. You can't come to my house to come I, get me. I, I, I want to dig into that, Abriana, because you've been doing a lot on social. You've been doing stuff you on have. YouTube. You've been doing stories. You know what I mean? Like I want to I want to know about one like. Tell me about this social media hustle you got going on right now, and then tell me what else you just been you've been doing just to like. Pay some bills. You know what I mean? Listen. <laughs> right, period. Because money, you got to get that money, you know? And I'm, I, you know, I'm like hustler of the year. I've always been a hustler. And even before I got my license, like at one time I was, I, I'm silly. Like I love to travel and I love to, you know, enjoy my life. So like at one time I was working three jobs. I was an assistant for the salon, everything. I've always just had a hustle. So like I said, if I got time, I'm going to use it, you know? So as far as my social media, just like I was telling Taylor, I feel like when I was working, I really didn't have the time that I felt like I needed to pour into my social media. And it's crazy because like my social media is growing rapidly right now while we are not working. You know right. What I mean? And this whole time I've been hustling, hustling, working, trying to put out content, but it's because I didn't really hone in on what I was putting out and also hone in on the times and all these things. Like social media is really a science. It really is. But I've been just focusing, you know what I mean? Focusing in on what I'm actually doing and what I want, who I want to reach and what I want them to see when I reach them. You get what I'm saying? Right. So, so just, if we're keeping summary real quick, my apologies. I just want to, just for the audience and people who are listening, like of the actions that we're taking, because we've been saying them, but we haven't really been listening. So like, Taylor, you talked about, you started, you shifted your focus on getting your products off the ground. Yes. I yes. remember you really were talking about getting your face out there, really taking social media more serious. Mm -hmm. Am I missing anything so far? Mm -mm. Nope. Hustle. 
Hustle. Hustle, yeah. yeah. Hustle. Well, I, 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 I got me a little bit. Hustle and planning. <laughs> Hustle and planning. planning. Yeah. Hustle and planning. What I have done, essentially, the last bit, I plan my business in quarters, all of my businesses. Um, outside of Chair Hop and Posh, I have my property management, and I'm a former cheerleading gym owner. All my businesses are planning in quarters. So January, February, March, kind of shot. Mm. Um, <laughs> April, we're going into this next quarter. And it's up and down. So I'm using some of my ideas that I didn't get to roll out in my first quarter and my second quarter and planning for a bang to end the year with the bang. Simple, yeah. simple as that. Are you guys planning for like a Q3 or are y'all planning for like June or are you planning for like September? <laughs> like I mean, we're honestly, we're not gonna come back. They're probably going to possibly allow us June or July, and right. I'm only going off of everything else. So like they're saying, you know, most people gave us that three month period, right? Or get like people are saying like three months. They're gonna allow you, you know, your bills to be put off for three months and all these things. So I'm like, we gotta go think about that three month period. We also have to think about the fact that I'm thinking June. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. They said, that, they said that the the um, unemployment was going to be paid out, could possibly be paid out until December. Yeah, twelve. it's like, yeah. I mean, they're going to pay you. But they're going to retro for the CARES Act because it is going back into March 24th. So they're going to, even whether we go back or not, they're going to have to pay it out because they owe at the yeah. end of the day. So mm -hmm. it could possibly go to December. doesn't mean that we're going to necessarily be off, but they're going to owe because they have to retro because the CARES Act started when they took us off. I don't know. Uh, don't go back. What are, what are y'all thoughts about that, though? What are y'all yeah. thoughts about these times? I mean, like, are y'all gonna open up immediately? Like, I'm thinking I was on a call today for work. You know, I work at Anheuser Busch or Budweiser, and we this consumer research is out there about like how consumers, like people who are 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 patronizing these places, like how their mindset is changing. We're opening with caution. A lot of when I'm looking at the other states that have talked about salons opening or have salons opening and I'm looking at these guidelines that they're pulling out. One thing I'm realizing is as salons and salon owners and stylists and fit should have been doing a lot of the stuff, period. Think, it's not yeah. like something, it's not something new. What's an example um, of that? There's some extra yeah. precautions that I am going to take as far as my waiting room is closed for our first month. We're closed. So you're going to need to wait in your car until your stylist is ready to take you. I'm not going to have, there's no extra guest. Um, you're going to need to wash your hands as soon as you enter my salon. There's going to be, we're going to take precautions to open, but we're going to open because just like the, the world opens up, these people are going to go back to work too and they've been off and they have been looking crazy. So they're going to need, right. they're going to need us as well. They're going to need us as well. Yeah. So we're going to have to take those precautions. I'm not sure that I'm going to take new people um right away either but i i am definitely going to take my regular clients and i'm going to put i've been talking to my um the other stylist in my salon i've sent them what i think the guidelines and rules should be and i am so open to them adding to it and saying hey Steph, this i've sent it out to my clients and say hey guys what did i miss because i have clients all over the rim in spectrum and they're experience and I'm also telling my high risk frontline clients, please let me know that that's your profession because we have a family and I have a home. So I need to make sure I'm taking extra precautions to service you. Right. I yeah, I like say I'll open up and down because I feel like, like me personally, I have a wide range of um, stylists that work in the salon with me, like as far as age range. How many stylists do you have? We have, we have eight. Okay. So what is seven stylists and then we have a nail tech. So and it's such a wide range. Like it's literally like I have you know people in this line that could be my parents. You know what I'm saying? So, and I feel a um, you know prote I, I'm protective over them. So I don't want to put them in danger. So like me personally, once we open, it's gonna you have to have a mask to enter. You have to wash your hands when you come in. There's not gonna be anybody in the waiting room. There's gonna be one person in a chair. People like me with eight you know stylists. That means it's only gonna be able to be four stylists working at a time. Like they're not going to be able to, because, you know, we're going to over the threshold of 10 people at a time, mm -hmm. um, as well as wiping down the bathrooms when you leave, wiping down the dryer chairs when you leave, wiping, like there's so much work that's going to have to be done even on top, even just like the styling capes. You can't just throw a styling cape on, you know how you would just throw it on, put it away, throw mm -hmm. it on. You got to sanitize that thing. You got to sanitize every comb. And really, 
there is no, um, you know, there's no way to protect yourself because when you shampoo someone, yeah. you're face to face. Like, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I'm all in your, you mm. know, your personal space. And so, we talk. And we talk. And so oh, I, yeah. I see seeing people like, don't talk to me. Don't come in here, get your hair done and go home. Like I've been- and what, is, what is like a mask life gonna look like in the salon? Like, is that even gonna work? I just I don't passed out. That ain't gonna work for me. <laughs> I cannot. You know how I, I can't, can't even breathe. breathe. Hot. Yeah, under the dryer, can you That imagine? breaks my face out. It's been breaking me out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be tough. The best, I mean, that's the best part of my my style salon is that I don't have to experience that, the amount of people and the contact. All my girls have their own suite in their own room and their own shampoo bowls. They all have their own bowl in their room. So they're gonna be able yeah. to sanitize after their clients. They don't share their space. The, the, our only shared space in my salon is our dryer chairs. And so I have the Clorox wipes ready on hand as soon as they get mm-hmm. up. I already have my up. services, my yeah, services prior, I'm sorry, Stephanie. Um, yeah. My services prior to this, all of this um, are always have been like intimate. Mm-hmm. I only take one person at a time. It's like a hour to two hours apart, like how I schedule. I normally mm-hmm. only take take like three to four clients a day because so I won't get burnt out on it um, because after standing up or sitting down and doing facials for hours like you get tired um Let me and just, so I cannot wait to book <laughs> you say? I cannot wait to book oh yeah it's amazing he is very knowledgeable that's the one thing I like about you when I first got my facial done and I came home telling my husband but of course she doesn't serve as men right now but right. I came I mean like I came home telling him like I love somebody that knows what they're talking about and like Kelly, like, you know, you had your hair done by me. You know, I like to pour in knowledge into my clients. I like to let you know about what's going on. So when I caught that from her, I'm like, man, she knows what she's doing. She knows what she's doing and she knows how to tell you what to do. So that, that's a key because not a lot of people know how to do that and don't want to share that with you. But it's right. like, you know, well, you like, my I think y'all more compliments. I think I'm giving you all a ton of compliments, but like the fact that I can even text y'all and just be like, <laughs> I, what? I, what do I do? I just <laughs> got one bump. Look at this. Go look away. At, Taylor, look at this. I, I sent Taylor so many pictures of my face. Taylor, look at this. What is this? I got all the pictures. <laughs> like, make it big. Like, you don't, I mean, I just don't think anyone has people that are servicing them that are like that. You know, I, I would say that for all of you guys. Like, you guys maintain very personal relationships with your clients. And I think that's going to be huge for you guys. A, a quick question I have before, I mean, we have to jump into questions in a bit, but with some of the other stuff that you've been testing, I, I know Taylor, you've been selling products, you know, for a while, but that's obviously ramped up. Ariana, you've been doing this, this kit thing. That's really cool. You've been doing it's food, TLC. YouTube that's and TLC. the TLC stuff. Like, do you plan, do you both plan and, and Stephanie with you too, like with chair hop and things like that coming up, are you guys planning to continue to do those things? Or do you think you're going to like... Um, Tail off, I absolutely. Have two, two streams of, of income. I have the voucher Three, program. Four. I have the, um, one, I, I, just, I definitely feel like Taylor. Jeff and Kelly, you both know what I just told y'all the other businesses I have on top of what mm-hmm. we're talking about. So I definitely feel like Taylor. I've always said, I don't have time, I don't have time, I don't have time. So I have not started my edge control line or my leave That's what I'm talking line. about. Period. But I did. Yeah. And I have started it in this quarantine. So that's something that I'm going to be rolling out in one of my last quarters. So it's giving me time to do things that I haven't. So yes, I'm definitely keeping up on that. Um, I'm doing a voucher thing. Um, I think before Brianna got on, me and Taylor were talking about my voucher thing is giving people ready because I just told y'all they haven't had their hair done in months. So that has kept me afloat. You pay for your voucher now and your voucher is good for 90 days. So when I open back up, then you redeem your voucher. Exactly. That's smart. That's good. That's smart. So that's income. And I've come up with different vouchers that caters to my clientele. I have, um, I cater to a natural clientele, mostly biracial. Um, so mostly kids, everyone knows that I love kids since my cheerleading gym and everything else. (laughs) So I have a lot of kids. So I have a kids package that gives them and they can pay for that voucher now and redeem, redeem it however they need to. And it's going to give them a savings. I even put it out there. Just like everybody else, Fashion Nova did it, so I did it too. Listen here, okay. stimulus okay. checks hit, y'all. Stimulus <laughs> yes. checks bring sale. Here. Come on, bring it here. Because Fashion I'm Nova hit my email, my text message, my inbox. They hit it all. So 
I hit it too. Stimulus checks hit y'all. Here's your vouchers. And and as my mar I have a marketing team that I use for my videos, my flyers, whatever they that I, I know who that is. And I you know should who that is. Y'all know my marketing <laughs> team. And I text them and said they said stimulus is hitting on April 15th, so this is rolling out on April 15th. And I meant that, and everybody knew my fire better be in when I wake up. I need that on April 15th. <laughs> I need that. You got it. Okay. That. Yeah. I'm dropping. And on April 15th. And I woke up, and the first thing I checked was Facebook, because y'all know how y'all are. And y'all told the whole world that y'all got your stimulus. So I was like, okay, let me post. <laughs> because y'all got your stimulus, so here is y'all vouchers. And so that was one thing that worked for me. And while in the midst of the vouchers are going, now I'm also working on the line that's helping me and things things of that sort so i'm yeah. definitely going to keep those things going the vouchers definitely work so that'd be i probably roll out one one a quarter because it works for just extra income yeah, yeah i'm i'm rolling out a new collection uh more pushing towards july um it was going to be for may um i'm going i'm dropping mother's day gift set boxes um i'm doing also i'm going to be i'm putting together like a facial in a box mm -hmm. so like you get like all of your steps to kind of Give yourself a little bit of self care at home. Makes you feel good. Does it come with a steamer? <laughs> I, I got one at home. Not that it matters, but I'm just asking. I mean, would it come with a steamer? I can point you to the right direction. <laughs> Twenty five dollars on Amazon. Right. I did um, a couple things since I've been off. Like I said, I do TLC, which has brought me numbers. Numbers. It's crazy. And all I'm doing is living by, you know, being a product of the product. And taking advantage of this time to get healthy, taking advantage of this time to get, you know, my physical goals met, that is huge for me. Like, I, I don't have time because I work crazy. You know, I'm, I'm busy. So, busy, not productive. You know what I'm saying? I'm not <laughs> doing, like, what is best for myself. Like, I'm giving to everyone else, but I wasn't pouring back into myself. So, now I'm doing that, and I just feel so much better. And I'm already, like, my mind is working on a, a higher level. Like, I'm ready to... I'm always coming up brainstorming with the next idea, next thing, next, I'm staying on top of trends and just staying on top of my business. But one thing I did do, which I thought was super cool and I'm gonna keep up is I did a wig raffle and, you know, I was able to reach so many more people with that wig raffle rather than making one wig for one person. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it created a buzz and I did very well with that. And I just did that honestly, just to celebrate me hitting 10K followers and it just turned into a whole nother thing. You know what I mean? And then, so yeah. it just put a fire in me to start putting out my work. Like, I'm good at this. Let me start showcasing it. You know what I mean? And then there are another, there are a couple of other things, business moves that I'm making that I can't speak about yet, but huge, huge things that are coming. And it's all because, like I said, I'm seeing the silver lining in that COVID. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, all right, I got more time. I need to pour some time into this or if I'm sitting around, I don't need to be sitting around not doing anything. I need to keep myself productive. I need to brainstorm. If I think so much of my mind, I need to use it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, yeah. And I think that we all can even and take any class. If you can take any class or even I've been taking classes. Like, yes. I've been taking formulation classes that you need to know for business. Yeah. I find myself, yep. I'm very good at doing hair. I'm very good with my hand, but on the business front, I'm about to be a monster on the business because that business is what you need to have that longevity. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like you yeah. got to know your business in and out and you got to know deeper than just, oh, I can do hair. I can be a hairstylist. I can own a salon. It's so much that's more than that. Mm -hmm. So it's much so more. Than it definitely so much more than just your craft that you do. You have to dig into that business and be, you know, know your business in and out. Even if you do hire people for jobs and things like that, know how to do it yourself as well and know how to do it on a minimum, like I'd be watching some um, lives and they're like, you know, you in your house, use, like she said, use what you got. Take that picture with your phone. You got an iPhone, you can get some some wonderful, wonderful work with your phone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> go, I mean, go outside. You know, go in your backyard. You know me, I'm going to be on that floor to get that picture. So, like, <laughs> use what you got to, you know what I'm saying, get to that next level. Hey, post your uh, Instagrams in the chat. Yes. Okay. Um, I have some, we have some questions in here. So, uh, I'm gonna start with this first one from Candace. Hey, Candace. Thank you for hopping on, girl. Um, how can the community support you all during this difficult time? Like, what do you need from the people in order to, you know what I mean? Keep things going right now as things are still shut down. That's so hard for me because I feel like, you know, I don't like to ask people for things. Candace, you know, Candace knows me. I've been doing Candace. 
I would do Candace here at four o'clock in the morning at my apartment, okay? Candace is an hey. OG. I've been doing Candace since before my license, before anybody. <laughs> about Ariana. So I love Candace to death. But like, it's, it's hard for me to say, I need help. It's hard for me to say, help me with this or do this. It's like, I'd rather just get it myself. And that probably hurts me sometimes because I like, I want to struggle through myself, but I don't even know. Like, I really don't know. Look, that like, alone, there's stuff you, gonna you need. You're going to make me like get mad. I'm about to be like a, like a pops. Like, I got like, fun. I got like a few things that I think you can, you need yeah, yeah. in my head. Hard. Let us know. Let me know when you, I mean, I can talk through, you know, I don't be trying to talk people. Let them, let them talk first before y'all try to whoop me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, Cause you know it's coming. It's coming. Every time. I'm stubborn. Like I'm a Taurus. Me too. I have a problem with not asking for help too. You know, I want to do everything myself, and I want to figure it out myself. My boyfriend tries to help me, and I be I need to be more nice. <laughs> no, no, that's not a good idea. He'd be like, okay, well, never mind. I'm not even gonna share anything else with you then. But I mean, some most of the time he'd be having good advice but then it's like when I have my mind stuck on something no one can change my mind I need to work on that but you know I need to get better at asking for help so, so we got two people that just don't want to give us no information or hey, what they need Stephanie can you bring it home Stephanie what, you, what, what can you can we do for what can we do for you Stephanie listen the best way to help us <laughs> is to invite people to our business pages to share our products that we are offering, share our service that we are offering, share the information that we are offering. We are the professionals in this in this industry. So the best thing you can do is help us promote our business because eventually this is going to be over and we're going to need to come on top of this. So the best thing we can do is have a good following and some new connections, new people that we can meet. And so we don't know everybody and you know people that we don't know. So hook us up with those people. Yeah, I'm so scared to just say purchase the product, even if we can't use buy it. Our buy, shit. Well, okay, hold on, Lizzie. Buy my buy our shit. <laughs> buy the kit kit. Buy the TLC. Don't, donate buy it to somebody else. Buy the, <laughs> the best seller. Even if you got to donate it to somebody else. You right. You right. Listen, I tell everybody subscribe, register. That's the <laughs> biggest thing you can do for me because. Long as I can connect to you and get to you some way somehow, we good. Definitely. There we go. I got an esthetician question for you, Taylor. Okay. Um, for someone who is currently in school to be an esthetician, do you recommend working for a company first or go straight renting a suite or loft to work for yourself? Um, I would say um through companies. So the literally the re what pushed me the most to start was I had an interview at the European Wax Center because when you're in aesthetic school, they, like any trade school, they really just take your money and only teach you the bare minimum and you got to keep learning, you know, years and years and years. So y'all all nodded at that one. We need to talk more about that. True. We, we do. <laughs> Everybody was comfortable with waxing, makeup, and people were comfortable with how to do a facial, but not knowing what to use on this person, this person, this person. If you notice, a lot of estheticians are graduating, but they're not doing facials. They're doing lashes and they're doing makeup and they're doing, they're doing waxing because that's what's comfortable. So I had an interview at European Wax Center, got the job, excited because that's what I was comfortable with. They told me I was making, I'm going to make $12 an hour. Absolutely not. I'm not going to make Ooh. $12 an hour. I was already making like 18 at my night. <laughs> Everybody's job. face got so tore up. Ooh, God. Listen, Bad. Right. There, got it. So, I was so offended. So I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm going to go get my own stuff. I saved up $650 and back to my motto, I used what I had and I just kept continuing to build my clientele just based off my skill and how I, I service my clients and how I make them feel and everything. And then word of mouth is still one of the number one, like, I guess, marketing ways to market your business. You know, somebody like, like Stephanie said, you know, people we don't know, we know people, you know, so it's just like, that's, that's, I would not say started a company I, that's just from my personal experience and then like I said I'm already like a headstrong stubborn type of person and I've always just done my own thing my Can I keep in? regardless uh, of what yeah. or so I, not have mm -hmm. I feel Taylor on that it goes both ways though I definitely feel it goes both ways um I started at JC Penny salon corporation company they took half a little bit more 
and they do, but I built my clientele in two years and never went back. So that gives you, and it's so funny because JC Penney's will tell you, these are our clients. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. my, my work, they're my clients. And they went with me. Coming with me. They come in with me and my right. prices are better than yours and they love my personality. Sorry, they can't use their JCPenney card. They don't care. So, <laughs> you, know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? It's just what it is. So it, it kind of works both ways. Um, I was, uh, when you were speaking about the bare minimum in school, I do, um, some people know, some don't. I do a cosmetology speaking tour. I go to the high schools that offer cosmetology programs only not your independent programs, not that I don't love them and I won't go to them. I do have a couple independent beauty industries, but I do high school programs only because they do get the bare minimum. They're in that classroom for four hours a day. They gotta go to their other classes. So they're getting the minimum and I just teach them and show them there are things you can do outside to be successful. I do tell them, I started at JCPenney's because I needed that clientele. And right. it did help me get that clientele. I need them to feed me that because I know what I can do it to, to retain that. So it, it's pros and cons to it all. Yes, they're gonna take your money, but that clientele and the work that you have and the products that they supply you when you're trying to get that. You always don't have that. Me as a salon owner, I get people that come, the girls, all the girls are welcome to shadow me. I'm, I serve on text board for Cosmetology Warrens as well and Pikes as well. All the girls are welcome to shadow me at, from any of the schools. They know that they can call me and say, hey, I'm on my way, come on through. And some of the ones that are ready to work in the salon, I work with them. Just like the chair hop goes, I work with them and say, okay, you need one client to pay me rent today. So you better get three on your books. You have to, because no one was gonna teach us that and they're definitely not gonna teach you at, at European Wax because they could care less. It's a revolving They door. don't even tell you to, they be having, especially black women, we mm -hmm. suffer from they're, discoloration and ingrown hairs. They just wax you in 15 minutes and and JC, it's a corporation. They're not going to teach you that. So it takes us as a community to teach the, everyone that Absolutely. and to help everyone that to do that. But it's not necessarily a bad thing to be there to use their resources. They want to use us and our <laughs> what we can do. We got to be able to use their resources too to build our clientele. I will say yeah. I was blessed. Um, I didn't. I wore. I started as an assistant. And it might not sound like a blessing, but it was a blessing. Cause like the stuff that y'all went through, I didn't go through any of that. I had open arms. The people that I assisted, you know, they now work in my salon and we're, you know, we're like family and I love them. Right. And um, yeah, it just, I went, I started from that bottom. So, you know, <laughs> it, I'm working for people that get 50 people a week and I'm, I'm pumping, you know what I'm saying? I'm shampooing at that bowl every day. So that's why I said my hustle is completely different. And just like you said, Stephanie, I do want to do that too, because my side of it is different. Like I want to preach that you got to have work ethic. Okay. If you have work ethic and you are, you know, fa a fast learner, you could do whatever you need to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But you have to have that work ethic put in you and being a shampoo assistant, like, that'll humble you. Okay. <laughs> I was <laughs> humble. I'm still humble to this day. I am humble. Like I'm, you know, I get down and dirty when I do people's hair, you know, I want your hair to be right period from the jump. I want you to leave happy at any point, if there is some unhappiness, I need to fix it, you know, but yeah, they taught me everything. So what you, what I didn't learn in school, which is everything, I didn't learn anything in school. Honestly, everything I learned, I learned from Gerard Pope and Gwen Banks. Mm -hmm. The real about That's real not. hair, they've been doing hair as long as <laughs> five, okay? They've been yeah. doing hair 30 years. I learned that from them. I didn't learn that in hair school. So yeah. I was so thankful to be able to work under them doing something that I love and it created a passion inside of me because I'm seeing these people are living. They are living. They're traveling. They they look good. They feel good. They have families. Like everything. They're living what I want to do. And I saw it for myself. And it's funny because I grew up wanting to be a lawyer. My mom, because I like to argue. I, and you know, at the shop, I like to debate. I like that. We like to have, you know, good conversation. But I thought I was going to be a lawyer because, and then it was also because I wanted that money. So then when I told my mom to be a hairstylist, she was like, nah, you ain't, you ain't going to make that because you ain't going, you can't make the money you think you want to make doing hair. So then when I started working at the salon at 18, she was like, oh, never mind, let's do this. Let me, what I got to do to help you get to the next level? Let me <laughs> show you all in because we saw it. So it's like, you know, if you put that in front of some young people and show them that, you know, not the glitz and glamour of Instagram, not that, but the hard work. I saw them do hard work. I saw them get paid for their hard work. And I saw them live a life that I could live as well. 
and we could do it coincide together and we could still be family and not want to, you know, mooch off of each other and not steal from each other. Be family. You get yours. I get mine. And we all just blessed. So I'm really blessed to have worked in that. Like after hearing what y'all saying, it's like, man, like I, I know I was blessed anyway, but I really was blessed because it was, I had a great upbringing and in coming into the industry. You know what I'm that's, that's great. It pushed me. It definitely pushed me just to hustle more. Cause like I naturally, like I'm an outgoing person, but at the same time I can be like introverted. So I didn't know a lot of people, but I had the confidence and knew I knew my shit. So I'm like, they're going to come, they're going to eventually they're going to just start flowing. Clients going to start flowing in and well, so and be it within a year. It did. For our community, all of the stylists at, the, at JC Penny, if you were basically an ethnic stylist, you felt the same way. So it automatically gave us that family bond. It automatically gave us that. So at JC Penny, there are 28 stations. So I'm working with over 30 revolving door because everybody don't use that station, that same person that using that station. So there's over 30 people that you're working with on a regular basis. A lot of personalities. So you, as us, we have to stick together, and we did. So I learned from some really great stylists, and like not learning weaves in school or anything like that. You learn that from stylists outside. I learned more outside of beauty school than I did inside of beauty school. But I'm so grateful because there's a lot of people who paid a lot more for beauty school than I did. And I got to do it in high school and I get to go speak at these same high schools now. And I get to go, I did Skills USA and now I judge Skills USA. So it's, it's different for me. So I, I really, really love those opportunities. And a lot of those people that I were just working next to in JCPenney salon, they're the managers of those salons. So it also gives me to go teach classes and that opens up doors for me right? personally. So I love the corporation side of it because I also was a supervisor at Salon Centric in Castleton. So the stylists and the people that I met through those opening doors, I did a lot of stuff in corporate just to rub elbows with the right people. Yeah. So that when I'm ready to do what I'm ready to do, that they're ready to help me. A lot of the stylists that I work next to, they are just running salons now. And it's so much easier for me to call them and say, hey, I need some products. We're doing a giveaway at my shop. And they're like, hey, girl, pull up and come get it. <laughs> nice. So that makes sense. So so if you were going the corporate route, then ensure that you're, you have a plan. And then yeah. two, ensure that you really focus on building your network. And that's a great place to start to build your clientele. Um, the next question we actually had was for somebody that's emerging in the industry, what would you recommend they focus their time and efforts on right now where they can't necessarily begin to uh, leverage new clients uh, to generate and help them promote? I think use yourself. Mm -hmm. I think do whatever, whatever you're doing, do it on yourself because you know, you, you, and that really creates, that makes people fall in love with you. You know what I'm saying? So not yeah. only do they like the service, but they like you. And I feel like that's what, you know, that's worked for me. Like people love me and um, they love what I do for them as well. But we also have a relationship too. Like I said, with like what Kelly said, but I think you should use yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what would that was a comment. That was kind of nice that. And I think that that's probably the biggest thing, you know, me even being an outsider right now, especially if you're new, like this is an opportunity for you to get your face out there. <laughs> Uh, and begin to connect with prospective clients. Yeah. How do you do that? That's through education. That's through, like you said, Abriana, making them fall in love with you. So mm -hmm. through all of that interaction, anybody who's a client, they want to know best practices. There's an opportunity for you to like become an expert to your potential client base on this field so that when all this stuff opens up, they know who they want to go to. Yeah. Right. And contrary I, to belief, like there are some salon owners and stylists that are willing to help and willing to talk. And I've been on the phone every week with like a group of salon owners. It's probably like five or six of us. And we just brainstorm and hint stuff. That's, this is the perfect time for that. If you're trying to gain your clientele so that when you are get out there, you can get in out there. You can be like, okay, I'm ready to do this, 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 this. And you're rolling it out there. So we get on the phone together and we brainstorm each other, bounce ideas. What y'all doing this week? How are we surviving? So it's okay to yeah. do that type of stuff too. If you can't service or even like the wigs, I'm seeing a lot of people do wigs. Yeah, but like wigs, like repair, like repair services, like where you drop repair the wigs services, off. Services, yeah. yeah. services or ordering them, styling them, getting them, cutting them. Yeah. All those, there's it's all the ways to get yourself out there. I've Colors. been doing, 
I have a I've been color doing wigs. I don't like to do all the extra stuff. So I'd be like, bring it here. I'll color it and then let them do all the rest. You do all you, you do so, what you do. I've been doing like um, regimens, regimens. So normally when you come get service and get a facial, it's included in your service. You get the regimen, you get the steps, show you how to do it at home. Um, so now like I have like either like FaceTime consultations with my clients or prospective clients that want to um, get the regimen or some people are a little shy. So they're like, send me pictures via DM and we, we just communicate that way. And I'm like really, really good at creating a regimen. People be shocked. Like, dang, like she didn't make me this regimen. I'm already using these products. It's already working. And I ain't even got a facial yet. So that's, that's what I've been doing. Um, being transparent, be transparent, just yeah. be transparent. Like I'm super like confident within myself. So it's easy for me to be transparent. Like uh, Abriana said, like she'll be in her bonnet. She don't care what y'all say. Y'all gonna get this bonnet. Like, and, um, and then I'm taking her advice too. Like just, I'm going to be actually like using the product on my skin. Like I do like, I try to dip and dab in like mask Mondays, but like I need to be more, more consistent. That's another thing. Be consistent. consistent. I tell myself yeah. that that's my biggest goal right now is consistency and discipline. Those are my two yeah. things I'm working on right now. Yeah. So definitely. Nice. Um, yeah, one that that's a good point. We had another comment, more of a statement from Candace. Hey Candace. Uh so good to hear black women encouraging one another. And then also like the collaboration that we're seeing. It's truly black women, black women magic. Congratulations on your success and praying for you each individually as you press through uh this tough economic crisis. Um, oh, I love it. Thank you. Thank you. That's true. I think that we're stronger together. And it's so oh, sad yeah. that we have built up this wall against each other. Just yeah. like I said, all you got to do, me personally, and I'm speaking for myself, all you have to do is call me or text me or whatever, and I'm not going to be shady. Like, I'm not, it's not in me. It's not in me to be like that. So it's like, I've had so many people ask me, like, how did you, you know, build your social media? Or how are you so, you know, com or comfortable with doing this? And it's like, you just got to step into it. You know what I'm saying? Trust yourself. Trust what you have paid money for. You pay money for this knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Use it, you know? Or you taking the time to put these videos together. I'm taking the time to put this video together. I believe in what I'm doing. Believe in yourself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And another thing is, you, like us as people, we have to just be a little more open and giving because, you know, if you give, it's going to come back to you. You know what I'm saying? And what's for you is for you. And what's for me is for me. You can't take nothing from me. I can't take nothing from you. You know what I'm saying? So you helping somebody is not going to take from you. It's, it's really going to build you up. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be blessed because you're helping the next person. So just like, let's stop. Like, I, I'm going to say that on my page tonight, just because it's like, you don't <laughs> see that no more. Like, stop fighting each other. Like, Indy, every hairstylist need to be BFS. Every, right. you know, I, skin absolutely. Need to be BFS. Every I have said, I want to do a video that just basically represents East Side of Town, like all the, the rest challenge. Kind of like it, <laughs> in a way, but I just want them to just represent the side of town. So you see North Side and all our North Side salons are gonna pop up salon owners, and then your West Side, and then your Broadway, and then your East Side, South Side. And I just wanted to, so it's more so that we're united. It's kind of, it kind of came out like the trainers did one like in the summertime, all the trainers, did you guys see that one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like something like that, just to show that we don't necessarily, we're on a different side of town. And I know that some people, we're all, we all can service. We all can help. Our schedules are all different. So it, it can be different. And you can't do a million. How many people live in Indianapolis? Like how many people, <laughs> what's our population? That's exactly what I was about to say. And it's everybody doesn't mesh with everybody and everybody right. can do everything. What y'all find on my life is too you many You might not like my vibe. I might, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's there's different type of people. There's different services. There's everything. We, and that's the thing too. You are you, and I'm me. You know what I'm saying? So we all do sewings, right? But you 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 as a person is different than this person. So it's it's not even a comparison because we're different people. You know, it's not even. It's too much time. It's too many like just tangibly. It's too many people. It's only so much time. Yes. It's impossible for you to service everyone. So yeah, ideally, you. you should build a network and then collectively can collaborate and refer people because that's going to come back to you. you I know? definitely do that. I don't want to get on a rant, but fuck it, I am. Do it. Let's like, do it. Think about from a consumer packaged goods space, you know, which I've really been operating in for the past 10 years. Plus, it's this idea that 
all these small like regional chain of groceries, like they actually all pull from the same distributor. And by doing so, that's how they actually compete against the Walmarts, the European wax centers of the world, because they come together collectively and they leverage the collective buying power that they have to get their products at the same rate, or at least a competitive rate as Walmart does from the manufacturers. Oh now, yeah. Community, when we yeah. think of cooperative economics, we damn near always fucking talking about bartering. And yeah, I'm, like, we, oh, I'm not talking about no bartering. I'm talking about passing around some octagons. And I ain't talking about no, no octagon squares. <laughs> and I ain't talking about, oh, well, <laughs> shit. I, mean, <laughs> shit. I got music. Can you push your music? No, what I'm saying is there's 100,000 stylists in Indianapolis. You all are using the same products. How can we come together to make operating cheaper for us so that we can enhance our profitability? Mm-hmm. Buy in bulk. That's all I'm going to say right now. And it's huge because, like I said, we work together, we will be better. Like, it doesn't even make any yeah. sense. So, like, if we came together and we like, well, we're not going to keep paying $7 for this spray. Everybody in the city is not going to pay 7 They're going to change that that amount. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, we're sure. together than separate. But we're so busy trying to one-up each other. And it's like, sure. we're stronger together. Maybe right. somebody don't want they, they lashes out of no weed box. Maybe somebody <laughs> wears out of a henny box. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all still both like selling lashes, your brand. Yeah. So like y'all come together and then y'all package yourselves individually. Because at the end of the day, what we need as a community and as business people and everybody on this call really gets it. Like people aren't necessarily always buying the products. They're buying the person. They're buying yeah. they're they're buying the brand, right? So yeah, we compete from a brand perspective, but at the end of the day, like we shouldn't be competing on the back end. Like, yeah. who cares? Like, who cares? If, if we know that they're buying us as a person, it don't matter how we, how we came to the forefront of this table. Because if you don't collaborate, that's actually raising your prices. That's raising the costs. So how can we reduce our costs by working together? And a shout out. I mean, like, I shout people out. Every, every time I see something, I'm always reposting because it's like, why not? Yeah. yeah. You can't, I, I do that because I'm like, we can help each other. And I can't do everybody and neither can you. I know you yeah. might think but I know you can't so let me go on and help you know what I'm saying and then I inform myself on like every hairstylist in Indy that follow me I try to follow them right back because I'm like that's somebody like you said that's in my catalog that I can say okay I see her work her work might be like you know similar to mine I can send you over here and I've seen her consistency over her page so now I can say go you know go over there if I can't service you or you know what I'm saying something or even if Somebody's doing a special. Hey guys, such and such is doing a special. Y'all been complaining. I've been booked, but such and such is doing a special. Here you go. You know, we can help right. each other. Yeah. We can't, we can't do it ourselves. Yeah. That ain't hurting nobody. Ain't hurting nobody. Sure. You're not going to miss no money by doing that. You're not going to miss no, no. money. And you know what it's going to do? Support, you know, begat support. So if I support, you know, Taylor today, she's doing something and I support her, she's going to think of me down the line when I'm doing something, she's going to support me. Most definitely. That's, that's how I feel. Like I do things. I can't wait to get my micro links. I, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like we all can help each other. Like it is, and then you are gonna post your micro links with your face glowing, and they are gonna be like, I want my face glowing, and I want micro link. You know what I'm saying? It, it, yeah. When they when you post the micro links need to up. come out. I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. We going over time right now. These micro are okay. old. But when I tell you, they hold up. They hold up. <laughs> We, they're holding up, okay? Wash and go, baby. Wash and go, holding up. So, listen, I'm a commercial on this here channel on today. <laughs> go and see all three of these ladies because they all can get, they, get the work done. Um, are there any closing thoughts? I have a couple. Do you guys want to close out with any closing thoughts? Jeff, I'm going to let you close out with your closing thoughts. You ain't this. got nothing? Y'all got this. Y'all got, got it? it. I'm, I'm sorry. Taking, sorry, I was being a commercial for Taylor and Abriana right now. Stephanie, I'll post a picture of me from Party Girl. Actually, I wasn't there. You, you know what? I'll post a selfie of me from Party Girl so that you can see you too. Stephanie's not paying attention no more. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> what would I I'm say? Kinda, I, people are saying stuff on Facebook Live and I'm trying to answer. Oh, are they? I wasn't yeah, even paying attention so, to this. I wasn't so even paying I, attention. I, and I'm, look, it's, I'm trying to answer them and, you know. Oh, yeah. And stuff. I'm sorry. Oh, y'all was y'all live live. live. Y'all weren't here for real. I'm sorry, Facebook. I was too busy in the conversation. I'm like in conversation. I'm trying to do both. Let's I'm multitasking. 
I'm trying to answer the people. And I can't know, see because I'm on my phone, not on my laptop. But yes, um, yes. Post pictures, Kelly girl. Yeah. I think that one thing you should take away from this conversation is that we are all one. You know what I'm saying? We're stronger together. So let's just start by even through this COVID, let's start supporting each other so that we can all come back. The beauty industry, all of us, not individuals, but the beauty industry can come back stronger. And everybody's gonna know about everybody because we worked hard to make y'all know, like we coming back and we coming back strong. Who's ready? Right. This person's ready, this person's ready, this person's ready. Like literally tomorrow or even tonight, I'm about to just go down my stuff and screenshot everybody and just be like, just refer, just like, just literally fill up my stories with everybody that I think is bomb and you know support these people and remember these people like that's why i say i always be posting stuff like okay y'all ain't forgot me haven't y'all because i mean i know i've been gone for a minute but y'all ain't forgot me so i just want everybody to remember that we are all in this together and we can all support each other and we can all you know win we can all win and there's, all no, and there's no competition from hello beautiful hair but you know i wanted to <laughs> be overall you know what i'm saying we all together it's no it's cool and i can't wait to see the collabs to come after this you know absolutely and i would say time is money time yeah. is money so even though you're you have nothing but time be using that time so that you can make some money mm -hmm. essentially i so would say stop use saying time wisely yeah. i would say stop saying you're scared i don't get that like oh i'm scared that nobody's gonna support me well first of all you shouldn't even be worrying about your family supporting you because that's like the main thing what people like want when they start a business like or get it, oh I, I hope my aunt books my hair appointment I hope my aunt or sister or cousin book a facial da, da, da. no you are going to all, always have support based off your skill and based off your service and whatever you do and you do it your best stop being scared like are you I'm scared to be broke and not doing nothing with my life I just yeah. pick a struggle pick a struggle pick not doing nothing or or do it yeah. And start with what you have. Like a lot of, of people make excuses like, oh, well, when I get this, I'll do it. Or when I get my hair done, I'll make a video. Oh, I got to lose weight. <laughs> just all these excuses on why they haven't started yet. So just, just start where you are. If now is ever the time where you've been thinking about starting anything, it's probably now. I mean, you, again, everyone has said this multiple times, you have nothing but time, but on top of time, you have nothing but opportunity because the world is not going to look the same once everything opens back up. Everything is right. now on a level playing field. You have the opportunity to play well with some restrictions, but you have the opportunity to play in the same box as everybody because everybody is on the same step right now. Ain't nobody moving any differently. None of that's happening. So if anything, you have the opportunity to really think about stuff that's been in the back of your head things that you maybe I should try that try it um I just think it's a it's a grand opportunity for you to just do whatever it is that you want to do scared be damn um I do want to real quick um before we jump out I want to say thank you so much ladies and Jeff for all joining me um if you guys are looking to follow them I'm just going to shout out their Instagrams I feel like that's just always easy so Stephanie, you can find her at Posh Corfor Studios. I will type this in the Facebook. It's already posted on the Zoom. Abriana, you can find at Hello Beautiful Hair underscore. And Taylor, you can find at I always get the skin underscore <laughs> I'm in dot beauty bar. Wait, did I get it backwards? You did. It's okay. <laughs> in dot I'm in underscore beauty bar. We gonna yes. we're gonna work on that. Don't worry. We're gonna fix that. Um, but follow them. I mean, I follow them. I love them to death. Um, their work is amazing. Like I said, I can attest to it. Um, and then two more things. One, I just want to review, you know, sort of the action slash takeaways that we talked about today, right? Like we talked about um, the conditions, we talked about the hurdles, we talked about all the bad stuff that's been going on. But the most important thing that I think come out of this conversation is a few things. One, um, work on your customer service. I mean, this is an opportunity to really directly talk to and see your clients, your people you serve every single day. So whatever you can do to just be in front of their faces to make them remember you, make sure you do it. Um, I'm going to say test things out, right? Whether that's e-commerce, trying to sell something, whether that's social media, figuring out a new way to use it. Um, and in addition to that, like, what is your story? Like, what is the story you want to tell? Um, what are the things you want to educate about? Um, this is, again, a prime opportunity to just get in front of people, even if you're not 
putting your hands in anyone's hair or anyone's face. Like there's an opportunity for you to connect directly with the people you want to serve or the people you currently serve. So I think there was a young lady that asked about, well, I don't really have any clients. What do I do? Guess what you get to do? Take all the pictures you you did of people. Some clients. When you was in school, uh, you know, whatever. Like you were visual. Anybody, you know, like you're whatever. Like it doesn't matter right now because you can just do whatever you want. You know, you're kind of on a le level playing field. I think another thing that's really important to know, just based on what you guys are saying, is that, you know, while you guys tried some new things out, you obviously found some things that are gonna work. So now you have an additional revenue stream. So while this time has been super difficult, and I know that, and I think we, it's all been difficult for us, this has also been a time where people have been able to really make some really cool stuff happen. So um, that's just super exciting to me. And so, I hope to see you guys continue to do the things that you guys are doing. Um, that wraps up this episode, I guess, of Out the Mud. You guys are obviously getting out the mud. Y'all getting it out the mud for real, too. Y'all doing multiple things. Y'all doing multiple things, okay? Like, y'all, yes. if there's anything that I know is women in the beauty industry are real hustlers. Like, y'all will get, the, get to the bag no matter what, okay? Yeah. So, for that... Um, I thank you. One thing that I always forget to mention on these episodes is that um, one of our partners and actually one of the companies that we we funded last year, Away Zones, um, is offering free signups for all Black businesses. So um, if you guys are interested in being listed on her app, she's building the largest platform for Black-owned businesses in the state and other states as she expands. Um, feel free to drop it in the chat. I know you all personally, so I can just ask you if you guys want to be included, but of I want course. to make sure that like another black woman doing something amazing, but also trying to make sure that you guys are highlighted in the same way that we kind of talked about the collaborative spirit. So yeah, send it to us be... so we can share, Kelly. Huh? Send it to us so we can share. I haven't yep. seen a zone since Party Pitch first year. Yeah, so we've been, um, so what we've been doing on here is everyone that's registered for the webinars or registered for, or been on Facebook, um, if they're interested, we just send her the names and then she lists them on the app. So as things start to open back up, or even now as things are continuing to be virtual, I think it's just a great opportunity to, to have a platform that's there for you guys. So um, I'll share that information as well. Um, thank you guys again. I really appreciate you. And I can't wait until things open back up so I can get my services done. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Bye, ladies. Bye, ladies. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye, Facebook. Bye, Bye Facebook. <laughs>